Hello, Pastor Steve Waldron here with New Life Pentecostal Church in Albany, Georgia. Today we want to look at Jesus' baptism. First of all, you might say, why did Jesus get baptized? Well, he told John the Baptist it was to fulfill all righteousness. Of course, he did not need it for the remission of sins because he never sinned. Now, some people use Jesus' baptism as the ultimate proof of the Trinity. I've read that in Moody Monthly and many other publications where they would say this is where the Trinity is most seen in Scripture. Well, first of all, the term Trinity is never found in the Word of God. We are monotheists. We believe God is a singular spirit. There are no distinctions in his being. He is not three persons. He is not three personas. He is not three personalities. He is absolutely one spirit. And so, man is created in the image of God, and we are just one person. So God is just one person. But secondly, I think the mistake people make is humanizing God. We give God human characteristics. So you have Jesus, the Son of God, sitting in the Jordan River being baptized, or standing in the Jordan River being baptized. You have the Father from heaven, a voice saying, This is my beloved Son. Notice the language, in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus said later in John 14, it's the Father in me. He that seen me has seen the Father. We know all the fullness of the Godhead is in Jesus. So, this doesn't require a second person. This was God who's sitting on the throne in heaven, who was also in his fullness in Jesus Christ. And then the Holy Spirit came like a dove. But again, this does not require a third person since, by definition, God is omnipresent. And he is not eternally like a dove. Many people talk about the characteristics of the dove in relation to God and the Holy Spirit. And that is all true. But this in no way negates and necessitates three persons in an ontological sense. What this is, is you have one God who is omnipresent, who is everywhere. He was in Jesus Christ. He was on the throne, and he was coming as a shape, as a dove, resting on the humanity, which we know as the Son. Again, there's no three persons necessitated there. The answer in one word is omnipresence. As a matter of fact, in John chapter 5, verse 39, when he's talking to the Jews, he said, You don't know the Father, you've neither heard his voice nor seen his shape at any time indicating the shape of the dove that came down was none other than the Father himself, not a third person of the Godhead. So Jesus' baptism doesn't in any way show us a holy trinity. It shows us an omnipresent God. Let me give you another example. I've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's estimated there's upwards of hundreds of millions of people around the world that have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Does that indicate that there is a hundred plus million gods? Or is it the one God that has filled us all with his spirit and he resides on the inside of us as we're the temple and the tabernacle of the Holy Ghost? Secondly, God still resides on the throne. God is able to be in multiple places at one time. Again, don't be fooled by Trinitarian thought processes, by philosophy, by vain deceit by the rudiments of this world, by church councils that were many hundreds of years after apostolic doctrine. Go back to this book, learn it, read it, and you'll see that the mighty God is Jesus. In Jesus dwells the fullness of the Godhead, and Jesus' baptism just shows His greatness and omnipresence. It is not a sign of the Trinity. God bless you. I hope you love His truth today, and it's revealed to you in Jesus' name.